Dear students, I am very happy to see you in this video lecture on the course group UAT PC IT 619, course name Data Analytics. And I am Dupri, Assistant Professor in the Department of Information Technology, working in Bharat Institute of Higher Education and Research, going to deliver this lecture video on the topic Hype. Now, first, we are going to see about what is Hype. Is a data warehouse infrastructure tool to process the structured data in the Hadoop. So it resides mainly on top of the Hadoop to summarize the big data and also it makes the querying and analyzing easy. This is a brief tutorial that provides an introduction on how to use the Apache Hive, Hive QA with the Hadoop distributed file systems. This tutorial can be your first step towards beginning a successful Hadoop developer with the Hive. So this is what the Hive. So Hive is a data warehouse infrastructure tool, which is mainly used to process the structured data in the Hadoop. It mainly resides on top of the Hadoop to summarize the big data and also makes the querying and analyzing easy. Next. I was not a relational database and I was not a design for online transaction processing, which is OLTP, and I was not a language for real time queries and role level updates. Next. Features of Hive. So it mainly stores the schema in a database and process the data into HDFS. It is designed for OLAP. It provides the SQL type language for querying for Hive QL or HQL. It is familiar, fast, scalable, and extensible. So these are the features which comes under Hive. So Hive, it stores the schemas in the database and process data into HDFS. So it is designed for OLAP. It provides the SQL type language for querying for Hive QL or HQL. It is familiar, fast, scalable, and extensible. Next. So this is what the architecture of the Hive. Mainly, the Hive architecture consists of four components. They are Hive clients, Hive services, processing and resource management, distributed storage. First, now we are going to see about the first component in the Hive architecture, which is Hive client. So under the Hive client, we have three things, which is Thrift application, JDBC application, ODBC applications. So under these applications, we have the drivers. They are Thrift, in under the Thrift applications, we have the Hive Thrift client. Under the JDBC applications, we have the Hive JDBC driver. Under the ODBC application, we have the Hive ODBC driver. So this was the first component under the Hive architecture. The second component under the Hive architecture is the Hive services. So under the Hive services, we have three things. They are the Hive web interface, Hive server, and CLM. So on these three are clubbed to the Hive server, where the Hive server gives the output to the metastase, and the metastore gives the output to the database, which is an Apache DB database. So this is what the second component under the architecture of Hive. Now, we are going to see a very third component under the Hive architecture, which is the processing and the resource management. So under the processing and the resource management, we have MapReduce, Test, Yarn. So these are the things under the Hive. So this is what the processing and resource management. So the fourth component under the architecture high, which is the HDFS. So all the data are stored in HDFS. So for the all the data in the high are stored under the distributed storage, which is the Hadoop distributed sites. So this is what the high architecture and its components. Above diagram shows the major components of the Apache high. So we have Apache clients. Apache Hive Clients, Apache Hive Services, Processing, Framework, and the Resource Management, and the last one is the Distributed Storage. Under the Hive Clients, 
So here the Apache help will support all the applications written in languages like C++, Java, Python, etc. Using JDBG threat and ODBC drivers, thus one can easily write the high client application written in the languages of their choice. So the second component is the high services. Here, the high provides various services like web interface, CLI, etc. So here, the high services are mainly used to perform queries. The third component under the architecture of the hive is the processing framework and the resource management. So here, the hive internally uses the MapReduce framework to execute the queries. The queries which are performed under the hive services are executed under the processing framework and the resource management. The last component under the architecture of the hive is the distributed storage. As seen above, the Beehive was built on top of the Hadoop. So it uses the underlying HDFS for the distributed storage. So these are the components which, under, which comes under the architectures of the Hive. So the components under the architecture of the Hive are Hive clients. Here the Hive supports the different types of client applications for performing the queries. So these clients are categorized into three types. They are Thrust Client, JDBC Client, ODBC Clients. The Thrust Client as the Apache Health Server is based on the Thrust ID. So it can serve the request from all those languages that support Thrust. The next is the JDBC Client. Here, the Apache Health allows the Java applications to connect to it using the JDBC Java. It is mainly defined in the class apache.hadoop.hive.jdbc.hive driver. The last uh, client is the ODBC client. Here, the ODBC driver allows the application that supports the ODBC protocol to connect to the hub. For example, the JDBC driver, ODBC uses the just to communicate with the hive service. Here, if you, for example, the JDBC driver, here the ODBC uses the thrust to communicate with the hive servers. User-defined functions. Basically, we can use two different interfaces for writing the Apache Hive user-defined interfaces. So here we have two different types of user-defined functions. The first one is the simple API and the second is the complex API. Now, we are going to see about the simple API under the user defined functions. Simple API. Basically, with the similar UDF API, building a high user defined function which involves little more than writing a class with one function that is evaluate. So, here in the simple API UDF function, we are using only one function which is evaluator. So, however, let's see an example to understand it well. A simple API, high UDF example. So, let us display this example. So, here we are having a class. The class name is simple UDF example. Here, the simple UDF example which extends the UDF. So, here the UDF is a parent class and the simple UDF example is a child class. So, the parent class. So, here the child will extend the parent class. That is, under this class, we will be having an evaluate function. That is, an one, only one function evaluate. So, under the evaluate function, we are passing the argument as text input. So, I mean, here, the evaluate function is going to return a new text. That is, hello. Plus, we are going to concatenate the input to string. So, the concatenation, or what we are going to concatenate with the hello will be returned in the another class. That is, the simple API example test class. So here in the simple API, we have seen we have, we have seen the uh, only one function evaluate. So under the evaluate function, we are going to return a new text hello plus I'm going to concatenate the word uh, hello with the input to string that is written in the another program. See, testing simple high UDF. 
Moreover, we can test it with the regular testing tools. Here we are going to test it with the regular testing tools like JUEG. Since we have urea to a simple one function, so here we are going to define a class that is a public class simply urea example text, which is an another class. Here we are having a function called test urea. So under the test urea function, we are going to create an object for the beforely created class that is a simple urea example. So simple urea example. And we are going to create an object that is an object known as example equal to new simple video example. Next, the another line we are going to see is we are going to equal the uh, text which is going to print here and already printed in the class of it's equal or not we are going to check. That is assert for assert equals of hello world comma the object created for the before class that is an example for the evaluate function is used in the simple video example that is a before class we are creating a single function which is evaluate so under that evaluate function we are going to write the text as word so this word is going to concatenate with the hello in the before program so here we will be getting a hello world also uh, in this example we will be getting a hello world so this two uh, output the same, the it going to print the output as hello world. So this is what a simple API. Next, the complex API, which is a subtle type of the user design functions. So however, to write a code for objects that are not the retainable types. So here we are using the struct, map, and array types. Hence. The org.apache.hub.i.qi.udf.generic.generic.udf API will offer a way in addition for the function arguments. It needs us to manually manage the object instead of class. And also, the complex API I used to verify the numbers and the types of the arguments we receive. To be more specific, an object inspector offers a consistent interface for underlying the object types. Hence, that different object implementation can all be accessed in a consistent way from within the hive. So, we could implement a struct as a map so long as to provide a corresponding object inspector. So, this is what the complex API. Here we are going to write a code for the objects that are not of retainable types. So it also used to verify the numbers and the types of the arguments we receive. Hence, the different object implementation can also be accessed in the consistent way from within the height. So let us see an example under the complex area, which is an Apache high UDF example. Basically, here, the creation of a function is called as contains string. However, the contains string, it takes the two arguments. The first argument is the a list of strings. The second argument will be a string. Further, this contains string function will return true or false on whether the list contains the string. So it will check whether it whether the uh, statement is true or false. Let me offer for an example. See the example. The first example is contains string of the first argument we are going to use is the list of strings. So here we are going to use the list of uh, list of strings are the list of A, B, C, and the second argument is a string which is B. So now we are going to check the first argument and the second argument. We are going to check whether the second argument is present in the list of the first argument or not. If it is present, it, pre it returns as true. If it is not present, it returns false. See the second example. Here we have the first argument as the list A, B, C, and the second argument as a string, which is T. So now we are going to check the, whether the second argument is present in the first argument or not. Here the B is not present in the first argument. So it returns false. So this is what the complex it is. So before we have seen the user-defined functions, which we have 
the two different interfaces that is simple API and the complex API. For the simple API, we have been using an evaluate function in one example, and we are going to call that evaluate function with the help of an object creation with the second class. So this is what the simple API. In the complex API, this is all done here, right? We will be writing a code for the objects that are not of returnable type. So here, we'll be having a method called contain string. So for the contain string, we are having a two arguments. The one argument is going to be the list of strings, and the another argument is the string. So here, we are going to check whether the second argument is present in the first argument or not. So uh, basically, the output of this function will be, it returns, it will be an logical uh, function value. It checks whether the given statement is true or false. Next, we are going to see about the high services and the meta stream. So this high services and meta stream we have seen already in the architecture diagram. See here, in the architecture of an hive, we have the hive services. So under the hive services, we have the high web interface, high server, CLI. So these three are clubbed to the high server. With the help of the high server, the output of the high server is given to the meta stores. So here the data are stored in the database. The meta store data are stored in the database. The database is called as Apache Derby. So this is what we are going to see the high services and the meta store. So, Hive stores its metadata, that is, a schema-related information, partitioning information. So, Hive will store its metadata. Metadata means it contains the schema-related information, partitioning information, etc., into the database. So, Hive is shipped with the Derby database. So, what is Derby? It is an embedded database backed by local disk. Derby is a single threaded database which does not allow multiple functions. It is not the production tree. Here, Hive converts the SQL queries into a map producer and submits the same to the cluster. In Hive, the meta store serves as a central repository to store the metadata for the Hive tables or the partitions. Any data store that has a JDBC server can be used as the meta store. So this is what the meta store. Here, I store this metadata into the database. The database is the Derby database. Derby means an embedded database backed by the local disk. So Derby is a single threaded database which does not allow the multiple functions because it is not the production tree. There are three different ways to set up the Metastore server using the different Hive configurations. The three different ways to set up the Metastore server with using the different Hive configurations are embedded Metastore, local Metastore, and the last one will be the remote Metastore. Embedded Metastore. Derby is the default database. So under the embedded metastore, Derby serves as the default database for the embedded metastore. So here, it is a simple way to get started with the hive. But we can only have one hive session open at the time that has the same metastore. Next, the second one will be the local metastore. In local metastore, the standalone database, that is the MySQL, for the post 3 SQL is used as the metastore. The third one is the remote metastore. In remote metastore, all the high clients will make connections to the metastore server, that is the MySQL or the post 3 SQL, which in turn queries the data store. In this, the metastore server runs in a separate process to the high services. So these are the three different configurations comes under the metastore. They are the embedded metastore, local metastore, remote metastores. Next, the next topic we are going to see under the hive is the partitioning and the bucketing. So this is the main topic under the hive. In Apache hive, 
for decomposing the table with acids and there are more manageable parts he uses the high bucketing process however there are much more to learn about bucketing in chemistry so in this article we will cover the whole concept of bucketing in chemistry it includes one of the major questions that why even we need bucketing in high after the high partitioning concept so this is the major question that is asked in high that is why even we need bucketing concept in high after the high partitioning concept at last we will discuss about the features of bucketing in high advantages of bucketing in high limitations of bucketing in high examples in species of bucketing in high with some high bucketings with examples so this is what the bucketing concepts in the high next this is what an architecture that is an example for the apache high partitioning versus the bucketing so let us consider the example of a student details so student detail it is an example so now the student detail it gets partitioned into two different data 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 tables they are the department chiefly and the department easily a single example is partitioned into two so after partitioning the department chiefly is further subdivided into two that is the bucket so after partitioning we will be bucketing that is a subdivided into two that is bucket one and bucket two so under bucket one and bucket two we have the same rows and columns that is the student id name year so here after the partition we will be doing the bucketing basically the concept of high partitioning provides a way of segregating the high table data into multiple files or directories however it only gives the effective result in few scenarios such as when there is a limited number of partitions only while partitions are of comparatively equal size so here we will be choosing only the comparatively equal size partitions so this is what the partition next the high partitioning and bucketing so apache high which is an open source data warehouse system used for mainly used for querying and analyzing the large data sets so here the data in the apache high can be categorized into three they are the table partitions and the bucket the table in the high is logically made up of data as being stored it is of two type such as the internal table and the external table so under this high we have two concepts that is the partitioning and the bucket so partitioning here the apache high organizes the tables into partitions for what we are doing partition for grouping the same type of data together based on a column or a partition key so here each table in a high can have one or more partition keys to identify a particular partition so using these partitions we can make it faster to do queries on the sizes of the data so this is what the partition is so here the partition high organizes the tables into partitions for grouping the same type of data together based on the columns or partition keys so here each table in a high can have one or more partition keys to identify a particular partitions so next bucket in high tables are the partitions so they are subdivided they are further subdivided into buckets based on the hash function of the column so in partition they are mainly based on the slices of data they are uh, they are mainly based on the columns or the partition keys in partition if the data is together based on the column or the partition keys but in bucketing it is further based on the hash function of a column in a table to give the extra structure to the data that may be used for more efficient queries so this may be used for more efficient queries next we are going to see about the joint operations in high so basically there are two types of high joints such as inner joint in high left outer joint in high right outer joint in high full outer joint in high so see the diagrams of the types of joints in high 
because the energy, see the energy, the diagram describes the, we are having a two tables, the left table and the right table. The common part between the left table and the right table is considered to be as the energy. See here, energy. Basically, to combine and retrieve the records from the multiple tables, we use hive join class. Moreover, in SQL join is same as the outer join. Moreover, by using the primary keys and the foreign keys of the tables, join condition is to be reached. Furthermore, the below query executes the join. We will be having a two tables, that is the customer table and the Roger table. Then, by using the join, by using the inner join, we are going to further retrieve the records. See the example, query. Select customer ID, customer name, customer age, ordered amount from the customer table and we are going to join the orders on customer ID is equals to the ordered customer ID. If it's equals, it will retrieve the data from both the customer and the order table. Next, see the, see the diagram of the left outer join in the diagram. See the left join. See the, we are taking the same uh, left table and the right table. Here we are going to retrieve the records of the whole left table and the common parts of left table and the right table. So this is what the output of the left outer chart. See here, on defining the height QL, the left outer chart, even if there are no matches in the right table, it returns all the rows from the left table. To be more specific, even if all of on the on classes matches the zero records in the right table, then also this high join still returns the rows in the reset, although it returns within null in each columns. So see the example, select customer ID, customer name, order amount, order data from the customer, left out of join, and order zone, customer ID is equal to order customer ID. See the right out of join, in right out of join, we are going to retrieve the records of the right table and the common parts of the left and the right table. So this is what the right out of join. Basically, even if there are no matches in the left table, the high QL right out of join returns all the rows from the right table. To be more specific, even on the on class matches the zero records in a left table, then also in a high join, it still returns the rows in the result. So this is for the matches value from the left table or the null in a case of no matching joint predicates. Say the example, select customer ID, customer name, order amount, order data from the customers, right out of join, order zone, customer ID is equal to order customer ID. Next, the full join. So here we are going to retrieve the data from both the tables at the left table and the right table. See here. The major purpose of the high QL, the full outer chain, it combines the records on both the left and the right of the table, which will fulfill the high joint conditions. So this is what the example here will be using the full outer chain. So, so far we have seen the high, what is high, and high is not a relational database, and the features of the high. Next, we have seen about the architecture of the high. Under the architecture, we have four components. That is the high client, high services, partitioning, Next, last is the distributed storage. So after seeing the architecture, we have seen the partitioning and the bucketing concept. For this, we have seen an example for the partitioning and the bucketing. Next, we have seen about the join operations in high. So this is what we have seen so far in this video. Thank you. Thank you.